the algorithm to compute convex solids in three space is uh, easy to uh, describe actually. So let's see what happens uh, when we add to this. Uh, and let me first have this uh, some definitions. Uh, the, there are n points in total from P1 to Pn. And let CH PR minus 1, okay, uh, th so this is, these are small p's, and uh, big, this is the set of these points. And the capital PR minus 1, let, let PR minus 1 indicate all the point, all the first R minus 1 points. Okay, so this is PR minus 1, and this set is capital PR minus 1. So and the uh, CH PR minus one let let it indicate the convex hull of the first R minus one points, and to this convex hull, I mean this this is for example uh, CH P four, okay? So CH P four is going to be the convex hull of first four points, and uh, the algorithm is going to proceed like this. Uh, in an iteration starting from CHP4, we are going to take uh, it in iteration R, we are going to take point PR and check whether this point is inside the convex hull inside CH uh, PR minus 1 or not. So if it is already contained in CH PR minus 1, do nothing. We don't need to do anything. It's already inside the convex hull. But if it's outside the the convex hull of the first r minus one points. What we need to do is we need to uh, update this to CHPR, which is going to be the correct convex hull of the first PR points. What does this update involve? Let's see that. Uh, and here, uh, if we have, we are going to have more definitions. If this is PR. Okay, and if this is PR, CH, PR minus 1. How will this convex hull going to, uh, how is it going to change? Okay, uh, this is uh, the question we need to answer. And if this PR, if you imagine yourself uh, sitting at this PR and looking at this convex shape, some, sh some faces you are going to see and some faces you are not going to see. What happens is that uh, the boundary of the faces that you see, we, name, we are going to name it as the horizon of PR. Okay, so we are going to, uh, uh, if, if you look at the figure in the book, I mean, we may have a more complex shape than this, but the, the important thing is that it's going to be a convex shape. Okay, it's, it's a convex shape, and while we are looking into this shape, we are going to see certain faces that are facing towards us and some of the faces are going to be facing backwards we are not going to be able to see it if it's like almost a spherical convex hull like the half of the faces we are not going to see it and some of them we are going to see the the, the thing is uh, if we look at the edges of the faces that we see okay what we will see is going to be something like this maybe there may be some other faces in between here, but it's going to be, it may be something like this. Okay, so not all of them are necessarily triangles, if there are uh, coplanar points, but what we are going to be seeing if PR is something here, if you look at this convex polygon, we are going to see something like this. This is a three-dimensional shape with other faces uh, behind it, but this is the, we are going to see something like this. And what happens is that if we add this PR to this convex hull, all the vertices here inside, I mean, even all the faces here are now going to be inside the new convex hull, right? So whatever we see here is from this point PR is now if we extend this convex hull like this, these, all these faces are going to be contained inside the convex hull. So what we need to do is, and this is, this, these edges are called horizon. If we can identify 
all the faces that we can see from PR, what all we need to do to update the convex hull is that remove these, all these faces from the convex hull and from this point PR, draw lines, draw triangles to the vertices of this horizon. Okay, if we do that, we are, this is, the update is complete. We don't need to do anything for the faces that are behind the, uh, these faces that we cannot see. So for the faces that we cannot see, uh, these are still going to be uh, on the uh, convex hull PR, but the faces that we can see are going to be deleted and we are going to add new faces by drawing lines from the PR to these horizon vertices. So we are going to add triangles uh, to this. Uh, but sometimes if, for example, imagine there's a face that we don't see here, but it happens to be, I mean, this is, I mean, if I draw it like this, it's like this is going to be a face we can see, but there may be a face here, for example, if PR is here, the triangle that I draw here may be on the same plane as the face that is behind. So we need to first define uh, whether are we going to treat such faces as faces we see or we do not see. Uh, we are going to treat them as faces we do not see because if we delete them, we are going to introduce holes in the convex hull. Uh, so we are going to, we can see a face only if the uh, plane, only if PR is above, strictly above the plane uh, of the front face of this face. So it's like, it's like this, if you, have a, if you have a face like this, it has a normal vector. Uh, if the normal vector uh, of, and this is PR, take a vertex here, if this angle uh, is uh, greater than zero, uh, it means that we are, going to, we are going to see it. It's strictly greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, we are going to, I mean, if, if uh, this uh, PR line lies on that plane of the face, we are going to assume that we don't see that face. We just see that face as an edge, so the face uh, we cannot see. It. In order to see that face, this angle, this PR should be strictly above uh, the plane. If PR is below the plane here, uh, if PR is something like this, we cannot see this face. And it also, uh, I mean also if PR is here on the same plane, if the angle is equal to zero, uh, actually it's going to be 90 degrees uh, here in this case, the normal. So it, it has to be uh, between, um, so we are going to see, I'm going to write the plane equation and we are going to see how uh, we can uh, check whether it's visible or not, but the thing is, in equality cases, when it's equal to 90 or 0, if it's just on the plane, we are going to assume we don't see it. Okay? So in some cases, when we draw a triangle, this triangle here may be on the same plane as another triangle that we don't see. Okay? The shared edge here, uh, the other triangle here, they may be on the same face. In such cases, we may join these triangles for a uh, uh, for, for to have a polygon with more four, four vertices, for example. If we have uh, triangles on the same plane, we can merge them. But uh, if you want, uh, in, the main reason is that to remove redundant edges. So it's going to be like on the same plane, we are going to have two triangles which are on the same plane, uh, which is, and this edge here, the angle between, they're on the same plane, this edge is a redundant edge. It's not like uh, any sharp uh, co contour of the face. It's not going to be a contour of the face. This is just an edge that is standing there as for redundant. We can just merge these triangles uh, to have this as the face. Okay, so, so some cases, our convex polygon may have uh, faces other than triangles, but if you may also consider keeping these edges, in that case, your, by, by construction, your convex polyhedra, your convex hull is going to be composed of all triangles if you don't remove them. Okay, so by construction, you may, you may have that. I mean, it may be easier to represent if all of them are triangles. Okay. 
the representation. Yeah, maybe in, for intersection tests it may be easier to test if, because there is a term called triangular meshes. And so this triangular meshes, is, uh, there's a standard way to represent uh, objects and even non-convex objects. So it may be, uh, it may be a choice, uh, it may be your choice to not remove these uh, edges and uh, keep them as triangles on the same plane. Okay, okay now uh, let's forget about this uh, the case, degenerate case where we have two triangles on the same plane. So what we are going to have is that remove these faces and add new faces uh, on this comic. So the update is again not very difficult. All we need to do is the difficult part here is that which faces of CHPR minus one do we see? Okay, identifying these faces. And the brute force algorithm is just check all the faces whether you see or not. And again, the checking whether we see that uh, all we need to do is actually we don't need to look at this angle. I mean, there's a better way. I mean, if you know this plane equation uh, for this uh, face, and you can find the plane equation if you know its three vertices, you can compute the plane equation. Just plug in PR on this plane equation. If it's greater than zero, it means that it is above the plane. No. Okay, so all you need to do is just plug in PR into this plane equation. If it's equal to zero, so it's for our plane equation is going to be something like this. AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to zero. Okay, so this is our plane equation. And if we plug in for this XYZ, if we plug in PRX, PRY, and PRZ for in terms of these XYZs, uh, if it turns out to be zero, it means that it's on the plane. And if, it's, if, if a point is on the convex hull, uh, we can treat it as, as if it's inside the convex hull and we don't do nothing. We may not need to do anything because it's already on the convex hull. And if it's strictly greater than zero, it means that it's going to be above this plane uh, and it's going to see that plane. If it is below, if this equation turns out to be less than zero, it means it's under that plane. And what, what happens if it's under that plane? It means that it's inside the convex hull. I mean, the, when we are doing the, uh, it's like this. When we are doing this check, which faces do we see? If it turns out that we don't see any face, what it means? It means that we are inside the convex hull. Okay, so via this iterative uh, algorithm to try to update the convex hull also determines whether we are inside the convex hull uh, or not, and we don't, do, we don't do any update in that case. So in the brute force case, if we do this check for every phase at every iteration, what we have ourselves in an O-square algorithm. So in, for M points, uh, you do, in the first case, it has four phases, then five phases, so the number of phases is going to increase linearly. So it's a, it's a summation term uh, from starting from 4, 5 to, up to n. So the complexity is going to be n squared. Now uh, we are going to think about whether it is possible to find which faces we see in an easier way by again making use of some neighborhood information about faces. Uh, we are going to therefore maintain a separate data structure to tell us which faces we see, which faces we don't see. Uh, we are going to maintain a data structure and while we are updating the convex hull, we are going to also update this data structure which is going to help us to determine uh, which points see which faces. And it's an interesting data structure in the case, in the sense that it holds data for the unprocessed pairs, okay? So it's like, uh, because we, we want to know for the new point whether which faces it sees, okay? So uh, for initially, uh, what we do is, uh, so let me first talk about this data structure we are going to have. It's going to be a bipartite graph. This data structure is a bipartite graph, meaning that it's, a, it's a going to be a graph with two different sets of vertices. In one side, we are going to have faces. Initially, uh, this, we have four faces. So this, the initialization of this convex hull is just determine arbitrarily four points and build this tetrahedron. And so here, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. 
And for the remaining points from P5 to Pn, okay, Pn, okay, for the remaining points that have not been processed yet, I also have uh, nodes here on the other side. This is a bipartite graph because I'm going to have edges only uh, in between nodes in different sets. Okay, I'm not going to have edges here uh, between. Uh, so these are two sets. Sets of I have sets of faces, the nodes that represent the set of faces, and the nodes that represent the set of points. And I'm going to have edges. This is called. This is going to be called a conflict graph. It's called conflict graph because uh, a point, um, for example, this is point uh, seven, for example. If a point C is phase three, it means that they cannot be together on the same convex half. If we have P7, we see phase three, phase three is inside the, if we see that phase, it's inside the convex half, so it should be removed. So they cannot, both of them, uh, they cannot uh, exist peacefully on the convex hull, therefore its name is conflict graph. So initially we uh, spent on time, uh, I mean it's going to be 4n operations, 4n minus 4 operations actually, to check all of these for n minus 4 points, uh, we look at whether they see f1, f3 or f4. Okay, so for all of them uh, we are going to uh, create, okay, this one sees F2, this one sees F3, and this one also sees F3, for example. And this also shows that uh, multiple points can see the same phase as well. So for a phase, we have the set of points that sees that phase, and for a point, we have uh, the set of faces that it can see. Okay, so it's the, the conflict graph is going to, uh, initially for all those points, we check for all these four faces uh, whether they can see that face or not. So this is going to take in ON time, so initially we spent N operations and uh, we, we spent it once. Now if we can show that we update this uh, fast, uh, we are going to have ourselves a fast algorithm. So what happens is that now if we have such a graph, it's really easy uh, to do the updates on the convex hull. So uh, all we need to do at each step, for example, if we have, if this is PR, okay, if this is PR, immediately li on in linear in the size of the faces that I see, okay, how many faces do you see, for example, PR sees two faces, they are apparent immediately from this graph. If you have this graph, by just looking at the neighbors of PR, all the neighbors of PR are going to be uh, the faces that you, you see. You don't need to do any check at that point, okay? Because assuming that this uh, PR, this data structure is correct. Okay, so in, in the first iteration, for example, you just pick a point, of, you pick this point, uh, you, you pick this point, you know the faces that it sees immediately. It's adjacent there, uh, it's the, immediate neighbors of PR are the faces that you see. So what do you need to do? You need to remove them from this graph because they are going to be removed from the convex hull. So also you remove uh, all the edges incident to these two faces. And you are also going to be removing PR from the graph because PR is going to be also now part of the convex hull. The, the invariant is that this graph, the conflict graph, uh, at the, as the point set, it contains non-process, unprocessed points, and this side contains the faces on the convex hull. Now, so just deleting them, it means that deleting them is not enough. We need to add the new faces, which is uh, constructed by uh, drawing these line segments from PR to this, for example. This was PR, this is the face that I see, so I draw these triangles here, okay, uh, something like this. Uh, this edge and this triangle, this edge and this triangle. I'm going to have three new faces by adding this PR, okay? Uh, so these three new faces should be added to the conflict graph. Should be added to the conflict graph. Now, here, for a face, let's look at this face. 
Now, after I added as the new face to, to this conflict, conflict graph, I need to uh, find out which remaining points see this face. Okay, for the unprocessed points, I need to find out which of them sees these new face. Uh, this is the if we can I, if I can do this uh, efficiently, uh, I'm going to I, I'll have my conflict graph updated and I can I can proceed to the next. Uh, Point. Okay, this is the only thing. Uh, addition of these triangles and update of this conflict graph is the only thing that we need to do at each iteration. Now, how can we compute which do uh, if we can avoid testing for all the points uh, against F nu? I mean, the, again, the brute force thing that you can do is test for all the remaining points whether they see F nu or not. But this is again going to bring you to the uh, n-square case. <laughs> I mean, the conf using conflict graph is, does not help you. Instead of doing it first, you did it and, uh, at the end of the iteration. It doesn't uh, matter. So uh, we need a strategy to find out whether can we avoid testing all the points against f nu. And the answer is yes, we can do something. We can do by making use of the existing information on this deleted face and on the, uh, I mean, this, this is the edge on the horizon, okay? So when I'm drawing two line segments to in introduce, uh, it's, it's something like this, let me draw it somewhere else. So there were two faces, one of them I see, let me have them like this. Uh, this was the face that I, the, we were seeing, and there were another face uh, here behind that I didn't see. Okay, I can have it, they're sh sharing the same edge. It may be something like this, okay? So this is the back side of that uh, face. The, that face is facing uh, towards the, uh, inside the uh, board. Okay, so it may, it may be something like this, and PR was here. This is the face that I see, this is the face that I don't see. And I'm going to be uh, creating a new triangle, uh, this, this new face. Let me have it somewhere here. And use a different color. So this is PR and I'm drawing this new face. And as you can see, this face one, face two, and this face new, they all share this edge. Now, what we are going to do is, in order to determine whether the points see this or, uh, or uh, see F new or not, all I need to do is check the points that CF1 and take, actually take the union of points which CF1 and F2. Okay? If a point does not see F1 and F2, it's impossible that it's going to see F new. So that's the, because I mean, F new is going to be in this range between, I mean, just consider this space here, uh, this, this angular uh, thing here. If a, a face, if a point does not see both F1 and F2, it means that it can never see F new. Okay? So this, we are going to make use of this fact. So, but, 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 so this, is, this is really important. What I'm saying is that if a point does not see both of them, it's not going to see F new, but it can have, It may be the case that uh, a, 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 a point that sees F1 and doesn't see F2 may see F new or, or not. We don't, we don't know. We need to check these points. We cannot immediately determine which, which one, because it can be uh, all the points within this range uh, can see this one, or for example, some points here, a point here, uh, it was seeing F1, it wasn't seeing F2, but it's now not seeing F new. But a point here is going to see uh, F new. So for all the points within this range are the, actually the points which are at the union 
of f1 and f nu. So let me name them adjacent uh, or neighbors. The neighbor list of f1 and the neighbor list of f2, if I take their union, uh, if I take these points, and if I just uh, consider, if I just check whether for these points only, whether they see f nu or not, uh, I'm going to update my uh, graph more efficiently. Instead of considering all the possible points, I'm just going to take a look at the uh, neighbors of the deleted face. And the, I can, since I know the horizon edges, uh, I know, again, we can use a doubly connected edge list to represent the convex hull. So given an edge, you know its incident faces by looking at the twin of it, you also know F2. So knowing F1 and this edge, you can uh, access the neighboring face in O1 step by making use of the doubly connected edge list. And uh, after you uh, take the neighbors of the deleted edge and take the neighbors of the other edge, you just check for these points uh, whether uh, they see F nu or not. If they see F nu, you just draw an edge from F nu to those new edges. So this is how you update your conflict graph. Now, it's not, I mean, the difficult thing here is that, uh, how is it going to be n log n? Okay, I mean, it's not apparent here. I mean, the, the thing is, that what is the complexity of this union? If the complexity of this union can be uh, on, it means that we are going still on square. Okay, I mean, we are going to be in you know, square. I mean, the, the difficult thing in the analysis of this algorithm is that we need to analyze the complexity of this union. What is the cardinality of this set of points that that's see here? And here you can, you can see that in most of the cases, it's like these two, uh, I think the log n is going to come from the fact that, I mean, it's, it's real difficult. Um, I mean, intuitively, it's like these two faces, they divide the whole space like in two regions. Uh, and for some of, the, it means that you can get rid of half of the points. Like in each case, half of the point, the test against half of the points uh, can be uh, prevented uh, if, if you see it like this. But most of the time, if only there, on the same plane, it's exactly half, but if it's like this, it means, it means we, we are seeing both of them. Most of the time, the pruned set of points is going to be smaller than uh, the, the I think it's like this set is larger than n over two. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm just, this is intuitive. I mean, we need to do a real mathematical analysis. And this is what, where it gets really complex. So I'm not going to go into details of this. But uh, in order to analyze the complexity, we need to analyze the complexity of the cardinality of this union. And it turns out that, I mean, intuitively, you should say that it's, it's faster. It, it, it should be faster than S squared because we are not testing against all the points. We are just uh, looking at the uh, edges here, and we are just picking out the union. And hopefully, these two faces do not see many points. If these two faces do not see many points, it means that their union is also going to be very small. OK? So we are, we are pruning out many points. Uh, we don't test against many points which are not in the set. So if a point does not see both of them, uh, we are not going to test F new against it. So this is we prune out uh, the points to be tested uh, like this. And this leads uh, an expected, uh, n log n expected uh, algorithm. And as you can see, uh, the analysis of the algorithm is much more difficult than, than the algorithm itself. The algorithm is, I mean, this conflict graph is really easy to maintain. You don't need to do anything. You just, in, initializing it in ON uh, time is easy. Just check whether a point is above a plane or below a plane. So the, the, the testing of a point, whether it sees a face or not, is just the same as testing whether a point is above a plane or below a plane. And as I said, we can do it by plugging that point into this plane equation. And this, it can be done in O1 time. And the update is also really easy. I mean, just after you pick a point, and, and this conflict graph, it's going to, its structure is going to be something like this. Initially, 
the set of faces is small and set of points is large. And at each iteration, the set of points is going to decrease by one. Okay? After we process each point, we are removing it. In the last iteration, there is going to be one point left here in this side. And the set of faces is increasing. Uh, so it's going to evolve like that. The convex cell, the number of faces on the convex cell is increasing. So this, this part is going to grow from 4 to uh, 2n minus 4. And it's going to be linear. It's going to be at, at most n faces, uh, or n faces at the end. And this part is going to shrink and shrink and shrink. We are going to uh, have one point at the end. And as, uh, as lo long as we update this conflict graph correctly, what we do on the doubly connected edge list is simple. Just remove those faces from face records from the doubly connected edge list. And by drawing these line segments, add new faces. One thing that, is, that may be difficult is that if you know this face is, I mean, this point is seeing this face, how can you find the horizon edge? Okay, I mean, the question is, uh, I mean, you know, you have, a, you have a point and you have a face, okay? That face has many edges. Which edge is contributes to the horizon edge is another thing you need to, if you are going to code this, program this, you need to think about these practical issues as well. And I think it can, again, it can be done. Uh, for example, it has to be an edge in which uh, the, adjacent, the other adjacent face should be a face that we don't see, okay? So, I mean, for example, if it has many, that face is going to have many neighbors. Uh, the, the neighbors that are in the visible list are not going to share, I mean, that, that edge uh, that are shared between them is not going to be in the horizon. So, uh, so finding, and also after you find the one horizon edge, by going over the next pointers, for example, can you, uh, trace out the horizon of PR. So this, this, these are interesting but practical questions. I mean, we need to answer. If you if you are given a horizon edge by going over its next pointers and checking which face we see or we, we don't see, maybe we can walk along the boundary of the horizon. Okay, I think it may be possible if if we are given a single edge, that edge. Uh, but the next pointers are within the same phase. Somehow we need to jump to the uh, other phase. And we, we saw in the first homework or second homework that we can do it by going the, by taking its Tivin and the next of its Tivin, we are going to be jumping to another phase which is adjacent to the same vertex. And we can continue doing this until we hit another phase that we see. Okay, we, we may have lots of faces we don't see in this uh, traversal. Uh, and the, this, since a vertex uh, is not going to be adjacent to many faces, so it's, I mean, th there's, a, there's a bound. I mean, it's, 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 it's either, I mean if a vertex is going to be adjacent to three faces at most, so we are going to be, while working this twin, while we are doing this twin next stuff, we are going to be inspecting three edges, uh, three faces at most. So uh, doing this, maybe on linear time, we can walk along the horizon edges. So knowing these horizon edges is important because we are going to add our new faces by uh, these, these edges are going to be uh, edges on our new faces. Okay, so we need to determine these horizon edges. This is, this is something important. This is where uh, the horizon boundary is like a 2D convex polygon, and we are drawing uh, line segments to each pair of these uh, edges on that and insert the face, uh, update the face records. Any questions? So the algorithm is, is I mean, as I s said, simple to describe, um, but if you're going to implement it, there are these practical issues. And again, doubly connected edge list helps us. And it's, it's a really good, I mean, mastering the doubly connected edge list structure is really important if you are going to do programming in computational geometry. It appears in many places. So it's like uh, 
the linked list or stacks or queues of data structures and algorithms is the main data structure is doubly connected edge list. So we need to really master uh, that uh, doubly connected edge list in order to efficiently uh, write programs in this area. Okay, so do you have any questions? All right, so that concludes the <laughs> computational geometry class. See you next week. Uh, in the final, I'm going to post some announcements today on the news group about the coverage, about the exam time. And the exam is going to be open book again. And, uh, and I'm going to, meanwhile, I'm going to start grading your last homeworks.